play with five to go in the regular season. Along with Megan Willis, I'm Alex Loeb, and Megan, in game one, it had a postseason vibe to it yesterday here at the ballpark, but ultimately it was Oklahoma State beating Texas for the ninth time in their last 11 meetings. It was a great game, Alex, and I feel like, like you just mentioned, the postseason vibes, I felt like every at-bat you were watching batters make adjustment, pitch to pitch, you watch these pitchers go out and change their game plans, I feel like. For O'Leary, she started off good, but it was Oklahoma State that gets ahead on two outs. They get two back-to-back -back doubles. They get those runs. Saw Fibri there go yard, but it was Texas. We've talked about this a lot. You can't make mistakes. You can't give the other team other opportunities. And unfortunately, Lauren Burke, as you see there, misses first base, and she gets called out there which would have been uh, uh, resulted in a two-run home run because Mary Iacopo hits a home run. So just things didn't go their way, I think, for Texas. But you had Carrie Everly, someone who's a top 25 finalist for Player of the Year. She was unstoppable, nearly unhittable yesterday. As for today's pitching matchup, Kelly Maxwell 13-2 and two going up against Courtney Day, making the seventh start of her career. Yeah, you know, a little surprised by this, Alex. I thought we were going to see Molly Jacobson out there going against Maxwell, but Courtney Day getting the start. Coach White likes to play a hunch. We know that, so he must feel that he saw something during the week with Courtney Day. Day will be going up against an Oklahoma State offense that hit their 63rd home run of the year yesterday. That's the second most all-time for the Cowgirls. Yeah, this is an offense. We talk a lot about their defense and their incredible pitching staff, but their offense also top 20 in the nation. And you see there Allison Fibri, she got that 13th home run yesterday of the season. She helped solidify that win uh, and put them up 3-1. to one. Oklahoma State hitting 326 as a team, averaging nearly six and a half runs per game. And going up, as we said, against Courtney Day, who is 9-0 in her career. Yeah, Courtney Day, again, a little bit of a surprise, but we have seen her. She got a start uh, to last Wednesday against Texas State. She had nine strikeouts. She looked very strong. Uh, so, that again, that's why you're starting to see her get back in the mix as a starter here for Texas. The leading off will be Kylie Naomi, the junior from Maurice, Louisiana. Takes strike one from Day. Yesterday, Oklahoma State put up three runs on Shea O'Leary. A couple of RBI doubles and that home run. Megan mentioned, courtesy of Febri, Naomi laying down the bunt. Sullivan fires over to Jefferson in time. Some defensive changes for Texas today. Around the infield, the freshman Alyssa Washington making her third career start at third base after getting a little dinged up during the Kansas series. Parker, Jefferson, and Sullivan round out the infield. I think you've got to be pretty happy if you're Texas fans to see uh, that Washington is okay. She's a good uh, look over there at third for Texas. And that way, you can keep Shannon Rhodes in center field. Yeah, Rhodes, like you said, back in center. Lauren Burke in left and Taylor Ellsworth getting the start in right. Here's the center fielder for the Cowgirls, Cheyenne Factor, who made a couple of nice defensive grabs patrolling the outfield yesterday for Oklahoma State. Factor went 0 for 2 at the plate and was hit by a pitch. The Cowgirls top 30 in the nation in offense, pitching, and defense. And she gets hit for the second time in this series. You know, I think that's kind of reflective of yesterday. We saw O'Leary go inside to these Oklahoma State hitters a lot more than maybe we've seen in the past. Uh, and I like that because you have to establish that zone. Texas has now hit 34 batters this year, so that one puts a runner on first. And here is Allison Fibri, the power hitting transfer from Georgia. 13 home runs on the season, 24 over the last two years. Texas's pitching entered the weekend with the 65th best ERA in the nation at 2.72.
Courtney Day, what to expect out of her. She's going to throw that curveball. You just saw she's got that changeup as well. She's not going to overpower him. She's going to stay in the low 60s, mid 60s. But it's all about that drop ball. When she can get that thing to move and dance, that's when she's, she's feeling really good. I think what made her so successful in that Texas State game was just the location, though, Alex. And it was how she was able to keep it on the plate and then also move it off, right? She was kind of expanding the zone a little bit. And so far, it looks like she, if she can stay on that outside part of the plate a little bit, uh, there's a wide zone today. Febri with a base knock. And Oklahoma State in business here in the top of the first. Avery does a nice job. This is on the outside half of the plate, a little up in the zone, and just able to drive it through the left side. Dangerous hitter coming up, and Haley Busby delivered an RBI double yesterday and entered the series tied for the 23rd most home runs in the country with 14. She's left the yard four times in her last seven games. This is an Oklahoma State team that has won a program record 12 consecutive Big 12 games. They dropped the conference opener against Kansas earlier this season, committed five errors. Kenny Gajewski, the head coach, called it disgusting. Those were his, his words, but he said it was an absolute wake-up call. Ever since then, they've been playing with intent. Gajewski in his sixth year in charge of the Cowgirls. Took him to the World Series in 2019. Yeah, I love that phone call that we got to have with Coach G. And he just, he's just so honest, right? And, and when, you're, when you have expectations and you expect to get back to the World Series, five errors is unacceptable, right? And so he, he, he did say, however, he, he always finds a way to spin it positive, right? He's like, okay, but it was good for the team. They needed to have a gut check. They needed to go back in there and figure out, you know, you don't get to get complacent. There's no time for that. A much needed strike from Courtney Day. Longhorns 35 and 7 on the season and 26 and 2 at home. This is the 10th matchup this year with Texas facing a team that is currently ranked in the top 25. Longhorns two and seven in that category. The Cowgirls five and one. Factor at second, Febri at first. The two two to Busby. Takes one to left field, and Burke is there. You're going to see this is a change up here. Busby waits back on it. Pretty good. I mean, she hits this really solid, unfortunately for her, just right at Burke. Two-way now for Sydney Pennington, and even though Pennington only hitting 256, Kenny Gajewski said nobody has come up with more clutch hits this season than Pennington, the senior. And one of the greatest home run hitters in Oklahoma State history, tied for the third most all-time with 31 in her career. Drove in the second run of the game yesterday with an RBI double, and that ended up being technically the winning run, even though it only came in the first inning. As Texas won it three to one. Pennington one homer away from tying for second on the all-time list. Parker backing up Rhodes. On the run, makes the grab in center to save a run. Shannon Rhodes back in center field after playing third yesterday. And boy, are the Longhorns glad they moved her back to the outfield. Rhodes on her horse. It remains scoreless in Austin.
Fans of Ed Hookham, and congratulations if you have been fully vaccinated. While the vaccine will help protect you from COVID-19, it will not completely prevent you from getting sick or from possibly spreading the virus to others. Even after the vaccination, you should still wear a mask. Wash your hands. Just showed a little bit of resiliency there. Today, Jefferson leading things off against Kelly Maxwell. Jefferson now just seven hits away from becoming the all-time leader at Texas. Maxwell, what a season, 13 and two. Number 22 in the country in ERA. You saw that there, I just, that strikeout to walk ratio is exactly where you want to be for her. 106 strikeouts to just 20 walks. Maxwell averaging just over nine strikeouts per seven innings. This is outside two and two to Jefferson. We showed that in the open, but she averages also just a little more than three hits a game. I mean, between right Eberly now. and Maxwell, <laughs> yeah. what a duo. 30 and three on the season between those two pitchers. Maxwell spins around, one away. You know, I think that's the other thing, too, for Texas. I, I like their at-bats they had against Everly yesterday. You know, it, they had to get a couple looks the first time through the lineup. But after maybe this first six batters, the bottom half of the lineup started seeing it, right? They got the hits in a row. The second time through, you saw even more hits. Texas put up eight hits. It's not like they couldn't get the hit. It was just getting them uh, with the runners on. Shannon Rhodes with a big home run swing. She is three homers away from tying the single season record of 18. Yesterday went 0 for 3 at the plate with two strikeouts. Maxwell quickly ahead, 0 and 2. <laughs> it's a tough pitch for her for the get called strike. We saw earlier in the first part of this uh, half inning, it was a wider zone for sure. And I think for Shannon Rhodes, yesterday was a tough day, right? She was chasing a little bit. So you take a pitch like that, you're like, man, <laughs> I can't get a break. Third strike out of the series for Rhodes. Megan, opposing batters are hitting 136 on the season against Kelly Maxwell. Yeah, and you just take a look there. She's going to live around 64, 66. She's got that rise, drop change. And I liked what Coach G said about her off speed and the fact that when that thing's on, it moves at two different planes. It can go away and down, which just makes it so hard for the hitter. And as a lefty, that curveball away to lefties, it just keeps tailing. I don't know what it is about lefty pitchers, but... When they get that curveball working, it's tough to catch up to. Maxwell's got her stuff early on in this one ahead, 0-1 to the reigning Big 12 player of the week, Lauren Burke, and now it's an 0-2 count. And that's that off-speed curve right there, right? She throw a hard curve and then the off-speed, it's gonna have the exact same spin as her hard curve. She just tucks it deeper in her palm and can take nearly, it looked like about seven to eight miles per hour off of it. There it is. Misses there to Burke, who has reached in seven straight, went one for three yesterday. But as you brought up earlier, instead of getting a double to lead off the fourth inning, was called out for not touching first base. I think for Burke right now, she's up in the lineup. She's seeing it really well. Comes from that Kansas series, she had eight RBIs. You know, she just picked up big time. Where Texas was struggling against Oklahoma, not hitting with runners in scoring position, she absolutely stepped up for Texas last weekend. Works the count full. No starter has struck out fewer times this year than Burke, just four Ks on the season. And they said she went around. 
Fifth strikeout of the year, Kelly Maxwell strikes out two of the first three batters she faced here in the first scoreless after one in game two between the Horns and the Cowgirls. Longhorn Network Softball is brought to you by American Campus Communities, where students love living. The six, seven, and eight hitters coming up here at McCombs. Uh-oh, Megan, the ponchos are out. This I is know. not a good sign. I'm purposely not looking at the radar. I feel like it just stopped, too. It's just a little, little sprinkle. So yeah. I think people are just preparing themselves it's for the, the just-in-case. It. It's a way to be positive. <laughs> Reagan Wright leading things off. The career RBI leader. All-time record holder for UT Arlington, played four seasons there before transferring over to Oklahoma State. And starting to heat up at the plate. As of late, 10 hits over her last 11 games, including a couple of homers. Yeah, I really like what she does behind the dish too. I've just, we got a good look at her catching yesterday. I like the way she talks with her pitchers. I like the way she frames the pitches. Courtney Day falls behind 3-0. and Again, Day making just the seventh start of her career. Hit a batter and gave up a single, but Shannon Rhodes made a nice grab to end the top of the first inning. Yeah, I think after that first inning, you know, you can get a pretty good idea about how a pitcher's going to throw in that first batter usually. You know, sometimes maybe you give them two or three. I'd say right now she's not on her game. I think we've seen her a little bit better and sharper. And mainly you watch where the catcher sets up and where the pitch ends up. I'd have to imagine Coach White will have a short leash. You already see Riley White is warming up in uh, the bullpen. So with a runner on first, here is Michela Richburg, senior from Broken Bow, Oklahoma. Takes strike one. Richburg, a 263 hitter, four home runs this year. But two years ago, went yard 14 times. That was the most ever in a single season by an Oklahoma State sophomore. Count quickly goes to 0-2 to Richburg. You know, one thing about Day, we, I go back to that Sunday series uh, this past weekend in Kansas. She started the game, and then Texas went through about three other pitchers, and because of uh, some lineup adjustments, uh, ended up burning O'Leary, and Day had to come back in. And what was great to see is she didn't start the game really great. She was, she was walking. She didn't have the control, but when she came back in, at the end of the game, she was on fire. And it, and she, she was in the bullpen. Coach White did clarify that. I was like, was she just sitting on the bench? And then all of a sudden, she had to go back in. He's like, no, I had, a, I had her out there warming up. I told her there's a possibility. Jefferson on to second for one over to first in time. Double play for the Horns. You love to see that out of Texas defense right now. This is a defense that you know, had struggled a little bit, but everything about that, it's a textbook 4-6-3 double play. That's a great job for Courtney Day. You've got to feel good. Again, when she keeps that ball down in the zone, that's what you're going to expect on defense. You should expect more ground balls. And I'm sure Texas was sick of hearing about how good Oklahoma State's <laughs> defense has been among the very best in the nation in turning double plays, best in the Big 12 for the second year in a row. So Texas is defense stepping up, but momentarily, Mike White, Mary Iacopo will go out to have a chat with Courtney Day. Yeah, I'd, ha I, I'd have to imagine just starting with the ball again, just trying to go out there and 
reiterate his game plan and what he needs out of her and see, you know, where she's at. Or quite possibly maybe just saw something <laughs> for a quick adjustment. Again, Riley White in the pen just in case. So it'll be Carly Petty coming up to bat. The sophomore from Moore, Oklahoma. Terrific defensive second baseman. A 286 hitter on the year. Oklahoma State came into the series with a top 20 batting average in the nation. Hitting 328. There is ball one from Day. Make it a 2 0 count. And he's fallen behind early in a lot of these counts. First time through the order to the Cowgirls. But it hasn't cost Texas. Longhorns have come up with some nice defense by Shannon Rhodes in the last inning. And then the infield turned to the double play just a moment ago. I think that's the thing for Texas, too. Kind of like Coach Gajewski was talking about his losses. You go and look back at those games, extra airs. For Texas, it is all about the extra opportunities, whether the pitchers are allowing too many free passes or the defense and the errors. You know, I think that's kind of a way to turn that into a positive. There's a positive for Carly Petty, two out single. But the positive is you look there, okay, what can we do when we play a clean game? How's that going to look? And I feel like that has to be what fuels their fire. This ball off the plate. I mean, that was about a ball off the plate up in the zone. Petty does a great job driving it right back up the middle, not trying to pull it. Great piece of hitting. Fourth base runner of the game for the Cowgirls with two outs here is Chelsea Alexander having a career year leading the team with a 423 average. Yeah, not too shabby, right? To have that in your nine hole. Someone who's able to turn that lineup over for you. Yep, one of two batters hitting over 400 for the Cowgirls. Went one for two in game one. Lays down the bunt. Iacopo scoops it up on the first in time. Strong defense by the Longhorns so far. Oklahoma State strands another runner. Iacopo, Parker, and Sullivan do up. Texas will wrap up the regular season next week. Game one of the three-game set against Baylor will be here at McCombs Field and on LHN Friday at 6 p.m. The final two games will be Saturday and Sunday in Waco. But again, game one on LHN and on the ESPN app. Here is Mary Iacopo leading off the second. Iacopo has gotten hot at the plate. Three home runs in her last 13 at-bats. Yeah, I feel like she's definitely been locked in. You know, I, I talk about this quite a bit with her, just a batter that has, at least from our vantage point, looks like she has just put in the work to get even better at the outside part of the plate. She's been able to cover that a lot more. And I just like her takes even. I feel like her weight stays back. Her timing is spot on. This was home run number 14 on the season for Iacopo yesterday. And that was that rise ball. Carrie Eberly has a great rise ball. She was sitting dead red on that one, though. It's her wheelhouse. But Maxwell's ahead here, 0-2. Over to third, Pennington. One away. First four batters sat down in order by Kelly Maxwell. Here is Mackenzie Parker. Coming up to the plate, looking to get the offense going. Second best hitter on the team among everyday starters. 417. With the first six home runs of her career all coming this year. Kelly Maxwell in the circle for Oklahoma State. Only a sophomore, what a stretch she has been on to start her career. The Texas native. 
last year in her very first college game through a perfect game. First player in Big 12 history to do that in their collegiate debut. Then in the last game of the season, threw a no-hitter. This year as a sophomore, second start of the season, another no-hitter, and a month later combined with Eberly on another perfect game. It's just been incredible what she's been able to do. And, and I I feel like you just can't talk about this pitching staff without talking about assistant coach John Barkfelt. He came from Tulsa. You know, Coach Gajewski had nothing but great things to say about him. He has been known to always produce great pitchers. Uh, I know you and I have called some Tulsa games in the past and some regionals at, uh, up in Norman. The way that he calls the game. Maxwell momentarily drops it, but recovers. Not only does he get his pitchers to buy in, you know, th there was a few other things that he specifically worked with Everly with, with that, with that rise ball and getting her to buy in at different locations and where to throw that. And then he's calling the pitches as well. And that was something Coach Gajewski was talking about that he even likes to learn. And he's like, you know what? He taught me that it's okay to walk certain batters, right? If, if you have this game plan. And so I think that's absolutely what you're seeing out of this Oklahoma State pitching staff. Three ground outs induced and two strikeouts by Maxwell, two away for Colleen Sullivan. Heading towards the stands. Yeah, when we covered John Barkfelt a few years ago, he was in charge of Emily Watson in the circle, who was just a mm -hmm. tremendous pitcher for Tulsa back in that series in Norman, Oklahoma. Back in that regionals, currently in his second season on the staff of Kenny Gajewski. What a huge pickup for Coach Gajewski. Again, Barkfelt was there at Tulsa for 16 years. Mm -hmm head coach. Two and one to Sullivan, leading the Longhorns in doubles with 10 of them. 18 walks on the year as well. Always been a patient hitter back to her time at UCLA. Works a 3-1 count here. Maxwell doesn't walk many. 20 walks on the year compared to 108 strikeouts. That's the ratio you want all your that pitchers to have. Texas looking for their first base runner of the day. They won't get it here. Another inning ending strikeout. And Kelly Maxwell has fanned three of the first six batters she has faced today, Megan. Yeah, you see her getting it done with that curveball, the off speed. But man, she is painting corners here for Oklahoma State. Some Megan Willis protégés in the house. Take it in a pitcher's duel right now in a scoreless battle as we enter the third. Love it. Little Longhorns. I want that popcorn. Uh, that's, <laughs> that looks delicious. Send some of that up right now. Here is Kylie Naomi, 0 for 5 in the series so far. As Courtney Day back out for inning number three. Day in the circle. Two hits allowed, just a couple of singles. One walk, no strikeout so far. Parker, unable to handle it. Well, that will be the 10th straight game with an error for the Texas defense. Yeah, this ball gets in on the hands there of Naomi, so it's not that hard of a hit ball, unfortunately, for Parker. She's not able to come up with it. 55th error of the season for Texas. Naomi over at first. Here is Cheyenne Factor, who was hit by a pitch in the first. By the way, you have one of the greatest base stealers in program history over at first base, and Kylie Naomi, sixth all-time in that category. 
with 46 stolen bases. 15 this year. And turns foul. I think for Day right now, you know it's that bunt situation. Trying to get that ball up in the zone a little bit more. Maybe try to get her to pop it up. Defense playing straight up, corners will crash. Sullivan ready, fires to second. Nice play to get the lead runner. That's awesome, that has everything to do with the fact that Sullivan started up in her face. She knew exactly when she got it, she was going to two. Parker's calling for it right away. She gives a great throw. Sullivan in perfect position. For the first out, here is Allison Febri, singled in the first inning, homered yesterday. As Factor now over at first. Febri, a Softball America All-American last year in her first season with the Cowgirls, led the team with a 382 average and hit 11 home runs, which was the fourth most in the entire country. Just an incredible pickup for Coach Gajewski and his squad. We talk about it a lot. There's quite a bit of transfers that have been here. He self-proclaimed transfer you. I think a lot of it has to do with what you and I were talking about before the game, just what, just what Coach Gajewski is able to provide these athletes. Sometimes I think when, when that transfer portal opened up, it allowed for players to maybe understand if they didn't like where they were at or, or something was going on, it allowed them to transfer, and he takes them <laughs> with open arms. As you mentioned, transfer you, a number of transfers in the starting lineup who have had major impacts. Febri, Reagan Wright, Haley Busby as well. Febri during her time with Georgia, hit 21 home runs, earns the walk there. Here comes one of those transfers, another one, Haley Busby, who spent her first few seasons as a Virginia Cavalier. Number of notable transfers. Carrie Eberle at the top, we got to see her. And she's up for top 25 player of the year, her and Janae Jefferson, but that was a huge, huge pickup. Parker on to second for one. Runners will be on the corners with two away. One notable non-transfer, Sydney Pennington has been around her entire career in Stillwater, the standout All-American third baseman. But before she gets a chance to bat, Mike White will head back out to the circle. I think for Pennington, the craziest stat is she has started in 190 now consecutive games, which amounts to every possible game in her career. Unreal. Tremendous defensive player. Top five on the all-time home run list, top 10 and Oklahoma State RBIs. And again, the coaching staff calls her the best clutch hitter on the team. Coming up in a big spot yep. right now in a scoreless game. Mike White has his final words to day in the infield, and here we go. Runners on first and third. Sydney Pennington, the senior from Sand Springs, Oklahoma. 115 career RBIs. And that one gets away from Iacopo, and Oklahoma State will grab the 1 0 lead. Score that a wild pitch. This pitch just slips right out of Day's hands. Looks like it's supposed to be a curveball. 
Completely short hops Ayakopo. So now runner on second. And the count 2-0 to Pennington. And, I, and the body language right now, I think, just tells you everything, Alex. That pitch again supposed to be inside, missed out. And so I think right now for Courtney Day, it's all in her head. For Texas, this is where you see, this is where the grit needs to come out. And this is where late in the game against Kansas, you saw Courtney Day go out there. And whether it was because she's the only pitcher left, so maybe she... she took some pressure off of herself. She goes out those last two innings, gets four strikeouts. Uh, but there's definitely a difference for her game to game. Four pitch walk. Again, Day making just the fifth start of the year in the circle. And just the seventh of her career. Two on two away for Reagan Wright, who led off the second with a walk. Right in her first 19 games as a cowgirl. Had just two total hits. But over her last 11, has 10, including a triple, a couple of home runs, and a couple of doubles. Went yard the other night, two games ago, against Wichita State. I like this timeout by Ayakopo. She saw right away. You can see it in her eyes. I feel like you could even see her her kind of mouth like, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what the what's the difference right there. And so as a catcher, that is your job to go out there. And it is your job to go and build that confidence back up and make sure, you know, you keep your pitcher in the zone right now. It's just one run, right? Go right back at these batters. It's the free passes when you're, you pitch a little bit nervous. And now you're not hitting your spots. You just add more pressure to that defense. And instead, go back right you know. You're here. You've done this a million times. And she's now ahead of right one and two. Yeah, great timeout by Ayakopo. Busby on second, Pennington over at first. One, two to right. Icopo, nice job hanging on to that one. Just getting worked back there right now. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That's your job. That's what catcher, you know, you know. You've been doing it your whole life. You know what to prepare yourself for. Sullivan calling for it, makes the grab. So Oklahoma State gets one, but they do strand two. one nothing. Cowgirls lead. Taking a look around the nation, how about the 25-game hitting streak by the freshman Janelle Mionio, fourth longest ever by a D1 freshman, Virginia Tech. 16 strikeout, no hitter. James Madison, 17 straight victories as we head closer and closer to the postseason. It's exciting. It's May 1, Alex. I know what We're you... We're almost there. <laughs> it's mayhem. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the Big 12 tourney coming up in just a bit. And the regionals. And hopefully the Sooners and more. Excuse me, the Supers. Oh, Freudian slip there. <laughs> we know they'll be in a Super. Hopefully the Supers and more for Texas this season. Taylor Ellsworth. Got the day off yesterday. Gets the start today, looking for her first hit since the Iowa State Series three weeks ago. And she's got it. We're tied at one. <laughs> Taylor Ellsworth so excited. She loses all her cards. And she's like, wait, what do I do? Don't go backwards, <laughs> Taylor. That is huge. You know, we talk about how Coach White plays a hunch. For some reason, he decided it was time to get Ellsworth back in this lineup. And what a big way she steps up. This ball's supposed to be on the outside part of the plate, probably a backdoor curve. It stays dead middle. 
and Taylor Ellsworth goes yard. Texas is now homered for the 69th time this season. That ties for the third most all time in program history. That woke up the crowd here at McCombs Field. It's a whole new ball game. Because you could feel Oklahoma State grabbing that momentum early. They had reached every inning. But the lead has been erased. Here's Jordan Whitaker, talented freshman. Take strike one. You know, for yesterday, it was the same thing, Alex. Texas, quiet in the first two innings. Bottom part of the lineup comes up, and it was Colleen Sullivan in the seven hole that gets the first hit of the game. Today, Taylor Ellsworth in the seventh spot. Strike two from Maxwell. Jordan Whitaker. A lot of walks, a lot of patience for just a true freshman. Walked four times in her last two games of the Kansas series. And 14 free passes on the year, but chases that one. Fourth strike out of the day from Maxwell. It's a great job for Maxwell to bounce back after giving up the long ball, going right at Whitaker. Here's another true freshman, Alyssa Washington, back in the lineup after getting dinged up in that Kansas series. Today making the third start of her career at third base. Two sixty one hitter in her first season with the Horns. Showed some pop earlier in the year, hit three home runs in a stretch of seven games in the first month of the season. I feel like it, it's it's just hard to get a grip or a grasp on <laughs> all the changes that Texas makes defensively, right? So because of that, you have some hitters that go up and down too because of that, I think. When they're playing, uh, they're feeling good, they get their hits going, and then all of a sudden, maybe because they make a couple errors out there in defense and not something's like clicking, maybe that gets affected uh, with their hitting as well. I think for a few of these Texas players, you're, you're watching them try to battle and work on getting that starting position. I think that's, a, a, on the flip side, Texas has a healthy problem in the fact that mm -hmm. they've got a lot of great hitters sitting on the bench, too. A lot of talent on this Texas roster for Mike White. Yeah. Alyssa Washington lines one to factor. All right. I mean, we're just as we're talking in Ellsworth, you get to put Ellsworth in the lineup and she's batting 370 off the bench. Well, it's tough to hit anything past Cheyenne Factor, who's just a tremendous center fielder for Oklahoma State. Yeah, that ball was going right at her. It was a nice job keeping a glove on that because it kind of just died. Two away for Janae Jefferson. Again, just six hits away from tying Brigitte Washington for the most all time at Texas. Swings at the first. Shallow left center, factor there again, but Texas ties it up. Another long ball this year from the Horns. This one, courtesy of Taylor Ellsworth. Number six on the season for Ellsworth, and we move on to the fourth inning, all knotted up at one apiece. Seven, eight, nine hitters coming up for Oklahoma State. You know, the story of yesterday's game somewhat was Texas leaving a number of runners on base. They didn't bring home anybody with runners in scoring position. Today, that's been the problem for Oklahoma State. Five left on base for the Cowgirls. They only left three on all of yesterday. Here's Richburg, and again, Parker has trouble with one. You know, I'm a little surprised, actually, that we see Courtney Day in the circle still. Uh, I just felt like last inning she was able to get out of it, but just not looking quite as confident. Uh, and on right from the get-go, you see Oklahoma State. I think you, we, we saw them having a big team huddle there. I have to imagine they're going to come out swinging and swinging hard this inning. Third straight inning, the leadoff batter has reached. 
Carly Petty sends one to deep left field, and that will bounce off the wall. Richburg heads to third and just slides in safely. Oklahoma State coming back with a vengeance here in the fourth. Yeah, just as I mentioned, this again, first pitch that she sees, it's up, it's away. She does a great job barreling this one up. And quite frankly, I was pretty impressed on how Shannon Rhodes played yep. this ball. I mean, and that throw. <laughs> wow. She knew exactly where she was going at. That was a close play. Second and third, no outs for the best hitter on the team as far as average is concerned, Chelsea Alexander. I was just about to say before that hit, the skies were suddenly looking ominous over McCombs Field. And it now feels that way for Texas. They're hoping the rain stays away. And they're hoping to keep Cowgirls off the scoreboard in this inning. But Oklahoma State threatening. Count now 2-0 to Alexander with two on, no outs. After this, it's back up to the top of the order. There's a strike from Day. Up now to 60 pitches. Take a look at this defense. Of course, everyone's playing in, get that play at the plate, but Colleen Sullivan <laughs> way off the line. They are not anticipating at all Alexander will pull that ball, and more so thinking maybe bunt. That's going to bring home at least one as Rhodes tracks it down. A second run coming in, and that'll be a two-run double from Chelsea Alexander. The Cowgirls jump back in front. It's a great piece of hitting right there by Alexander. As I was saying, Texas may be anticipating a bunt, not so much. This ball down, this ball low, enough for her to drive it into the outfield and does a great job getting both of those runners in. Just as we were talking about, they had left five runners on base throughout this game already. This inning, not the same. Well, it looks like that'll be the end of the road for Courtney Day. Riley White heads out to the circle. We'll be back. And Courtney Day came into this one undefeated in her career at 9-0, but has allowed three runs responsible for the runner on second, replaced by Riley White in the circle. Still no outs here in the fourth inning, runner on second. And back up to the top of the order, Kylie Naomi. Riley White, 5-1 on the year and hasn't given up a run in five of her last seven outings. Yeah, she's definitely gotten stronger as this season's gone on, Alex. You know, at the beginning part of this season, having trouble with location. Towards the end here, not the same. She's been able to find that strike zone. I feel like she keeps a nice, quick pace in the circle. And sort of like what we were talking about with Courtney Day, you can tell right away when she's feeling it. Allowed two earned runs, Riley White did, in five and two-thirds innings of work over that three-game series against Kansas. Well, for Texas, they've allowed three runs, but only one has been earned. Iacopo, a quick chat with Riley White. Oklahoma State, three runs off four hits, no errors for Texas. One run, one hit, and two errors. Riley White, third on the team this year with 36 strikeouts. Naomi skies one foul. an Oklahoma State offense that came into the series averaging 6.4 runs per game, 19th most in the nation. They were held to three yesterday, but still picked up the victory. So far today, we got the same score as game one. 
That one gets away from Iacopo. Runner advances to third. Wild pitch. Not sure if she got tripped up there. Just looking at the face of Iacopo. That was a changeup. Riley White, she's going to attack both sides of the plate. She's got that curve. It's her drop, though. It's her drop that she can get not only to just go down, she'll get a nice little tail to it, too. And when that thing's moving, she's in the driver's seat. Well, that one hits Naomi. Runners on the corners. Fourth hit batter of the series. That's tough. That hits your back leg. You're, usually, if I have to feel like you're you're in the batter's box, it misses your front leg. You feel like you're in the clear. I think that one surprised her a bit. See if Naomi takes off over at first. Again, sixth all-time in stolen bases in Oklahoma State history. Here's Cheyenne Factor. Strike one. Yesterday in the first and third, Oklahoma State ran. Iacopo threw out the runner at second, and the runner at third stayed. So, be interesting to see. I mean. Different runners for sure, and Naomi with the 15 stolen bases, good chance they'll still send her. Factor trying to lay down the bunt, Sullivan. Everybody's safe. With the runner on three, Sullivan absolutely needs to be looking at that runner, making sure it's not a squeeze. Alexander halfway down. But the way that she turned, Sullivan just didn't give herself an opportunity to then get that out at first. That'll be scored a fielder's choice. Bases loaded for Allison Fibri. Singled in the first, walked in the third, homered yesterday. 45 career home runs for the grad student. Nowhere to put her, and the count goes 2-0. and oh. Thirteen home runs on the season. Quick throw back to third. Three and zero. Four pitch walk, and it's a four-one Oklahoma State lead. And again, action in the Texas bullpen. Molly Jacobson, the veteran, warming up, and Mike White, another trip out to the circle. I think for Coach White. Just having frustration, trying to figure out who's going to step up and be that starter. You know, he went with Courtney Day as he felt like she's had some good starts moving forward. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to get out of the fourth there. Riley White coming in. You see O'Leary go down here to warm up, too. Not surprised one bit. I think for Texas, this is a must win, right? You're thinking of Big 12 and standing, so I'm kind of surprised, again, that we didn't see Jacobson get the start. Or, more so, go back to O'Leary or Jacobson instead of Riley White. Base is loaded again for White. Here's the cleanup hitter, Haley Busby. Big home run swing and a miss. <laughs> she was trying to leave the yard. I love that look she gave to. She is in the zone, and it's one of those. I mean, that is the hack you want with bases loaded, especially with a hitter like Busby. She's got 14 home runs this year, top 25 in the nation. No two count.
going to say this pitch better not be anywhere close to the plate. Not with those last two swings. <laughs> you can see it in her eyes. I love it. Busby transferred over from Virginia. A few years ago, she had a monster career with the Cavaliers. Fouls one back in her last full season in 2019 with Virginia. Hit the second most doubles in the ACC with 17 and had the eighth best batting average in Virginia history, but said she wanted to go somewhere where she knew she would have a legit shot to play in the Women's College World Series and ended up transferring to Oklahoma State. Riley White picking it up a little bit. So you see a big hack like that. I love it out of the freshman White, especially after walking in a run. Just going right at Busby, knowing, again, you have nowhere to put her. That one topping out around 68 miles an hour. Busby one for three this year with the bases loaded. A 400 hitter on the season. And has driven in 38 runs. Burke, Washington, and Parker converging, and Parker able to make the grab. Whew. <laughs> just... On the edge of our seats up here, <laughs> watching that. A little bit of miscommunication between the two, not sure. Or maybe there just wasn't any communication. Luckily for Texas and White, they get that out. Out number one of the inning, bases still loaded, this time for Sydney Pennington. 0 for 1 with a walk. Ball one. Pennington one home run away from tying for the second most all time in program history and four home runs away from the record. 2 0. Last year. Hit a career best 375 this year, average sitting at 254. Pennington ropes one, dropped momentarily. Washington, nice job going home. Runner safe at first, but the freshman Alyssa Washington gets the out going home. That was nearly a double play. That one was close at first. Love the fact that Washington State composed even after not fielding it cleanly mm -hmm. to get that lead out. Especially for a player who's not at everyday third baseman. Again, just the third start of her Texas career at third. So two away, bases loaded for Reagan Wright. The transfer from UT Arlington. Checks one back to White. Goes to first, and the inning comes to an end. So Oklahoma State leaves the bases loaded, but they do tack on three more for one Cowgirls. Clouds approaching in the background. They will need to play five complete for this one to be ruled an official game, hoping the rain stays away as we begin the bottom of the fourth inning. Texas trying to rally. Down for one, Shannon Rhodes leading things off. Rhodes 0 for 4 this series with three strikeouts. Quickly retired. Texas with one hit so far today, Megan. That was a home run, however, courtesy of Iacopo. But other than that, Maxwell has done a strong job in the circle. Yeah, second time through the lineup, going to call out Jefferson and Rhodes, right? They're two good at hitters. Jefferson swung at a first pitch, it was off speed, and it was a weak fly ball to center field. Rhodes out front of an outside pitch, both of them just way too good at hitters. And in a time like this, in a series like this, that's the leaders that they need at the top of this lineup to step up big time. Yeah, I meant to say the home run by Ellsworth yesterday, Iacopo went yard, but it, it's the same story as yesterday. The solo home run, and that is all for the Texas offense up to this point. Here is Lauren Burke has reached in seven straight heading into today. Strikeout victim in the first, and now the count goes 0-2. And that's not to say the rest of the lineup's not doing their job, because they absolutely are, right? Yesterday, they got the eight hits. You got it one through nine. Again, but you got to rely heavily. You're at the top of the lineup for a reason. Janae Jefferson has been 
hovering around the 500 mark even during this season. Showing she's a little bit human, I guess, these days. But this is the time that they really need to grind and figure out a way to win and in these bigger games, right? Yeah, facing two of the arguably two of the best pitchers mm -hmm. in the nation. Yep. Everly and Maxwell, 30 and 3 combined on the year. Pennington chases that one, but the grab is made instead by Naomi. But this is how the games are going to go the deeper in the season, right? Alex, you're, you're not going to score the nine runs or the seven runs a game that you're averaging when you start playing these better pitchers. So that's when you have to start figuring out different ways to get yourself on. Two away from Mary Iacopo, who left the yard yesterday, has homered in two straight games in three of her last five. Maxwell just consistently throwing strikes. Four strikeouts, no walks, one hit allowed through three and two thirds. And efficient, only 44 pitches so far. It's that first pitch of that, that Iacopo just took. That's the one that you want to be hammering, right? Ellsworth hit first pitch for the home run in Texas. You know, it's not that it's always that backdoor curve to the righties. I think she'll mix in that off speed, and it's that off speed that's truly, I think, when you're seeing Texas out front or weak fly ball, weak ground ball, it's that off speed that is so deceptive. Kind of golfs one over to short. Naomi is there. And a 1-2-3 inning worked by Kelly Maxwell. On to the fifth we go. 4-1 Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State took game one, 3-1. They're up 4-1 today. Kelly Maxwell in the circle, allowing just one hit, a home run to Taylor Ellsworth. Meanwhile, the Cowgirls, three runs in the fourth inning after scoring their first run of the game in the previous frame. And they're coming up to bat here again in the top of the fifth against Riley White. Same batters who led off the fourth inning, leading off the fifth, Richburg, Petty, and Alexander. Riley White in relief. One walk, no hits in that last inning. <laughs> Bottom three hitters in the lineup. Done a lot of damage for Oklahoma State today. They have reached four times, including a couple of extra base hits and a couple of runs driven in. Richburg two seasons ago became part of the first trio in Oklahoma State history to each hit double digit home runs in a single season joining Sidney Pennington and Samantha Shaw in that year. Parker is there. It's a good start for White. I feel like after walking in a run she's done a much better job going right at these hitters. Still having a hard time, I feel like, getting that curveball. She's kind of running that one in on these righties. So I still think she's working through a few kinks there, but much better. You know, the scary thing about Texas being down 4-1, the top six batters in the Oklahoma State lineup combined have a single, and that's it. <laughs> it's been the bottom part of the order, Carly Petty, a single and a double so far. And works the count 2-0. Oh. Three and 0 oh to Petty. Oklahoma State yet to lose this year when leading 
heading into the fifth inning. As is the case right now. And there is a strike three and one to Petty. They say she went around. Petty was halfway over to first base. Come on back. <laughs> I definitely asked too. I feel like they, the same thing happened to Lauren Burke earlier in the game. Uh, I don't think she went. <laughs> Consider it a gift, Texas. Kenny Gajewski says. Come on, here we go. Full count, payoff pitch from Riley White. We'll do it again. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming up from White. Five and one to begin her Texas career. Sullivan backhands it. Nice job by Colleen Sullivan. Two away for Chelsea Alexander, who came up with a big two-run double in the last inning. And has bumped up that team leading average to 425 on the year. Only started five games a season ago. But with that batting average this year, obviously a full-time starter this season. Riley White's done a nice job out of the pen, has faced eight batters, yet to give up a hit, and only one walk. Two one on the way. Alexander, one of the fastest players on the team as well. This team among the Big, big 12's best in stolen bases. And Alexander, a big part of that, if she can get on the 2-2 with two away, chopped over the glove of White, bounces off of Parker, and Alexander does reach. Interesting play there. No one's covering second. Oh, they don't pay attention. I mean. Mm, 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 mm. Alexander now in scoring position. You have to imagine Alexander, after she gets to, she never goes back. And so, because Riley White didn't even pay wow. attention, that's what allowed her to take second, even though Riley White was in the circle. Back up to the top of the order, Kylie Naomi now with a runner in scoring position. Sends one down the line and foul. As the fire engine has seen enough. So long, boys. Nice little light show on the way out. And speedy Alexander in scoring position, and Naomi reached on an error in the third and was hit by a pitch in the fourth inning. Well, now we know why they left. Yeah. <laughs> Something much more pressing. Umi skies one to left field. Burke is there. And the inning comes to an end. Again, Riley White keeps Oklahoma State off the board. On to the bottom of the fifth we go.
Well, this was Mike White moments ago in between innings talking to his ball club. Yeah, I love it. You know what? I, we're up here and you know, we watch all their games. It's no secret. I also play for Texas and you're watching a team out there beat themselves, right? We're watching. I think there should be three errors on the board. You're watching miscommunication. And so I have to imagine that's the conversation. Hey, you guys are better than this. You guys go up there. You guys are not swinging the bat like you should. You guys are the number three team in the nation when it comes to batting average. You all can do it. Who's going to step up? Who's going to be the leader here? And it just kind of looks a little complacent out there, right? Well, obviously the team heeding his words. They have come alive in the dugout. They are trying to get something going. Just one hit on the day for Texas. A home run by Ellsworth. Other than that, Maxwell has retired. The other 12 batters she has faced. And then I'm not saying Texas should have 10 hits on the board and, you know, five runs, but it's, it's the defense. It's the amount of extra opportunities. It's from the pitching circle. This is a pitcher who has a 1.22 ERA, right? She only averages giving up just, I think it was three, 3.4 hits a game, right? So you're not coming out there expecting to get a ton of hits, but you definitely can string together much better at bats. Parker trying to do that here, has worked a 3-1 count. Kelly Maxwell, four strikeouts, as we said, that one hit allowed, and yet to walk a batter. Full count coming up. Maxwell, 19 and eight in her career, came into the contest tied for the 22nd best ERA in the nation. And a leadoff walk earned by Parker. Second base runner of the game for Texas. It's a great job by Parker, especially we saw that emotional meeting beforehand to go up there and make sure you stay within yourself. You're not swinging at pitches out of the zone. A walk is as good as a hit in this situation. Here is Colleen Sullivan. Ten doubles on the year to lead the team. 18 walks. And again, Maxwell misses. First walk of the game that was by Maxwell and just her 21st of the year compared to 110 strikeouts. Can Texas take advantage? Two and zero count for Maxwell and action in the bullpen. You have the ace Carrie Eberly, the preseason All American at 17 and one, and right next to her Logan Simonek, one of the greatest relievers in Oklahoma State history. I mean, this is a pitching staff that's just incredible. <laughs> Top five in the nation as a team in ERA. There is Simonek. Second all-time in saves in Oklahoma State history. Two walks to start off the fifth inning, just what Texas needed. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to see if Oklahoma State makes a change. I can't imagine they would, probably wanting her to work through it. This is a great time. You've got a three-run lead. There is John Barkfeld. Looks like he will head out to the circle to talk things over. Texas with their best threat of the day. Two on, no outs. And the batter coming up who left the yard in the third inning. Taylor Ellsworth deposited one 260 feet beyond the wall to give Texas their only run of the game back in the third inning. It was her first hit in three weeks. 
Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of action out of Ellsworth. For a while, she was the mainstay out in right field, or she would go back and forth as the DP. After Oklahoma, we didn't see her. Saw JJ Smith getting looks out there. Jordan Whitaker. Texas yesterday was 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position, but on the season, Ellsworth, a 400 hitter with runners on second or third. And another ball from Maxwell. All of a sudden can't find the strike zone. It's a big position again, Ellsworth. Her last A.B., she goes yard, kind of sending a message. I think, hey, I want to be in this lineup again. This would be huge for her. She could step up once again. Pennington steps on the bag for one, and that's all they'll get. But a big first out by Oklahoma State. There will still be runners on first and second. One away for Jordan Whitaker, the freshman. For Maxwell, a great job after walking those two batters to stay within yourself and still hammer that inside part of the plate. That's all about Coach Barkfeld knowing where the runners are. Just because maybe you feel a little uncomfortable doesn't mean he's not going to go inside to these righties. Mass comes off of right, and just like that, Whitaker heads back to the dugout. And once again, you're going to want to hammer that inside part of the plate with a runner on first and second. You're trying to get the ground ball to the left side. And that's exactly what she does. She does even more so. She jams up Whitaker. Well, it will be up to Alyssa Washington to take advantage of having multiple runners on. The true freshman lined out in the third. Big swing and a miss. Texas started off the inning with a walk to Parker, a walk to Sullivan. But still looking for their first hit of the contest with runners on. Washington falls behind 0-2. Nearly 40% of the runs this year for Texas have come in two out situations. But they won't get one there. An inning ending strikeout by Maxwell. That is the third time today she's ended a frame with the K. We'll be back. Longhorn Network Softball is brought to you by American Campus Communities, where students love living. starting to drizzle here at McCombs Field as we begin the sixth inning. Now, officially, we have completed five, so if it came to that, they could call the game, but obviously right now, that is certainly not necessary. Just a few sprinkles as White delivers ball one there to Cheyenne Factor, who was hit by a pitch in the first inning. Also came around to score today, 375 hitter. Texas has given up four runs. Two of them have been earned. Five hits allowed by Texas pitching. Riley White coming on in relief of Courtney Day. Megan has only given up one hit and one walk in two innings of work, facing ten batters. Yeah, I think you go back to when she came in, the situation she came into. She did hit a batter as well as the walk. So she, she didn't help herself in that case, loaded the bases, and then that walk was the fourth run. But after that, was able to get that location honed in and go right at these hitters. Now, if you include this outing, Riley White in six of her last eight appearances has not allowed a run. She's the classic case <laughs> of effectively wild, wildly effective. <laughs> That is a fascinating term. I mean, the first pitch she threw this inning went straight to the backstop, and then all of a sudden she comes right back to it. So as a batter, you see that. You're like, wait, is she in the zone or is she out of the zone? And it's kind of hard to dig in 
when one gets slung into the back, right? She's but in the she zone here, and that was the effective part of wildly effective <laughs> That's here. That's right, exactly. There's that curveball away. She gets a nice late break to it. Here is Allison Fibri, who has been a thorn in the Longhorn side in this series, homeward yesterday, and has reached three times today with a single and two walks. Slice is one to right center, and Rhodes is there. Again, the, the only hits in this lineup today for Oklahoma State have come by the eight and nine batters in the order. That is it. Fibri retired. Well, tack on the single by Fibri. I lied just a little bit, a white lie, <laughs> Megan. Other than I that single, other, other than that single, <laughs> the top seven hitters in the lineup don't have a base knock, including Haley Busby. She delivered an RBI double yesterday. Did come up with the bases loaded earlier today and was swinging for the fences. But was unable to bring home a runner. Parker is there first one, two, three inning work by Texas today. Offense hitting crunch time here as we enter the bottom of the sixth. Well, the NCAA recently announced the 20 potential regional host sites. Again, 16 of those will be announced by the selection committee on Selection Sunday. But here's the potential 20. There are two pages to this list, and there are the two teams playing today, Oklahoma State and Texas, vying to host. Again, the 16 sites will be announced when the selections are made after the conference tournament. Janae Jefferson lays down the bunt, slides in, and that is one of the few times you will ever seen her thrown out on a bunt single attempt. Yeah, and hats off to Kelly Maxwell. The pitcher in the circle gets this, especially as a lefty, too. She has to make a complete turnaround. Oh, Yikes. can we get another look at that? That was uh, a little iffy. Yeah, I think she beat that throw there. But one we, out. We've seen a few. Close plays at first through the first two games. Yes, we have. Two of them did not go in Texas's favor, but we move on. Here's Shannon Rhodes coming up. One more look. I mean, that's yikes. That's a better angle. I could see. I could see why he called her out now. <laughs> One zero to Shannon Rhodes. Rhodes looking for her first hit of the series. 0 for 5 with three strikeouts. Still sitting on 15 home runs and 49 RBIs, both top 15 in the nation. Wow, that is well off the plate. But that, again, I think I mentioned it earlier in the game, Reagan White behind the dish just doing a great job in getting these pitches called strikes. She gets her body around it. She gets the glove between her shoulders. She pushes the ball towards the plate. Unfortunately, that's going to force Shannon Rhodes to swing at that pitch. And in this at bat, she looks much better than her first two. She took that first ball. The swing and miss was on a strike. So it was a good one to pick to swing at. Maxwell, Maxwell has only thrown 67 pitches here with one out in the sixth inning. A very efficient performance by the sophomore and another strikeout of Shannon Rhodes. This is going with the off speed Maxwell. And because she's so far ahead in the one two count has no business bringing it up, that's perfect location. And she's just showing us again why she has been so good this season. Maxwell, three career no hitters. Again, she's only a sophomore and she was part of another perfect game with Eberly, two way for Lauren Burke. Texas limited to one hit today so far against Maxwell.
Longhorns do have 13 come from behind victories this year. Hoping for another here. Now down to their last four outs of the day. With it drizzling like it is pretty consistently now, Megan, who does that favor, the pitcher or the hitters? I would say the hitters. I mean, as long as at the pitcher, I mean, it must not be too bad because both of these pitchers leaving the ball in their throwing hand, not keeping it covered. She's going to want to start keeping that <laughs> mm -hmm. ball in, in her glove so it stays dry. Asking for a new one there. Maxwell walked two in the last inning, her only two free passes of the game. Well, she recovered in the fifth inning after walking those two batters. But suddenly walks another, came into the game with only 20 walks on the year. It's her third walk of the game. Texas has had base runners in this series, but have left a number of them on. One run yesterday, one run so far today. Here's Mary Iacopo, 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs. Maxwell misses again. For Texas and for hitters, and in a rainy situation, it's just even more important to be more patient. Stay patient as much as you want to hit. Copo has never had a better season at the plate. Career highs in home runs and batting average. 14 homers, of course, four shy of tying the Texas single season record. She is on pace to break that along with Shannon Rhodes, while also hitting 396. Copo reached in 12 straight games entering today. Burke on at first, the 2 1 with two away here in the sixth inning. Wright has trouble handling that, and Burke will advance to second runner in scoring position. Wild pitch from Maxwell. Here we go, hitters count for Iacopo. Called strike two, Iacopo was ready to take first. What do we think? <laughs> that one was close. That backdoor curve. It's off the plate and at the very end, it comes right back over, kind of tucking around. Probably could go either way. Full count offering, got her to end the inning. Another base runner left on, and here we go. Final frame on the way here in game two of this series between the Cowgirls and the Longhorns. We'll be back in Austin. Maxwell pitching a gem. Here we go, seventh inning on the way. Oklahoma State after taking the opener 3-1. Similar score, similar game as they are up 4-1 here as we begin the seventh inning. Two of the four runs have been earned just like yesterday. Texas getting one run courtesy of a homer just like yesterday, two Texas errors. And Oklahoma State taking advantage. Trying to add to their three-run lead. Here in the seventh, Sidney Pennington skies one to left field. Burke reaches up and unable to get to it as it leaves the yard. 
Sydney Pennington all over that one. This ball way too good for a batter like her up in the zone and she mashes this one. 32nd of her career tied for the second most all time in program history. That's supposed to be a curve ball away. That one got up and as you saw in that, just all over the heart of the plate. First run of the day allowed by Riley White now in her fourth inning of work. And by the way, for Oklahoma State, just want to add Megan, 64th home run of the year, second most all time in single season history. Yeah, this is a team that just has everything working for them, right? Their offense can do it. Their pitching staff, incredible as a staff, just a 1.32 ERA coming in the weekend. They're fast. You have some of the base runners, but it's in, in their defense looks good, right? So you got all three things working. That's why you're going to see a score like we've seen the past two days. And then on the flip side for Texas, it's got to be so frustrating when you, you take a look at the coaching staff and trying to figure out because you know what they're capable of. You know what the offense can put up. You've seen bright spots in the circle. Just like that, Riley White can go back out there and make that ball move. She gets a little bit more juice behind it and she gets the big strikeout. But for Texas, it's too many opportunities they give. You can't go into a series like this that's so important and having two errors. You just can't against a team like this, not a top 10 team. This one will reach the stance. This was such a big series. Again, the second to last series of the regular season, such a big series for both of these clubs and the clubs in the Big 12 standings. Entering the weekend, entering game one, Oklahoma State led Texas by just two games in the Big 12 but they are trying to now extend that lead to four games in the standings. For Oklahoma State, they go and face Norman or Oklahoma mm -hmm. next week. And what a great series, I think, going up here against Texas to prepare yourself to then go against the number one team in the nation. There's a dart to left field off the wall, off the bat of Richburg. Oklahoma State now out hitting Texas seven to one. That's White. the longest single you will ever see. Yeah. White goes inside there and Richburg all over that one. I know that wall out there, right? Since the new padding, that ball bounces off real hard. That's a great throw by Burke getting into second right away. Seen both her and Shannon Rhodes play that wall perfectly today. Oklahoma State sending in a pinch runner, Scotland David, and it looks like that will do it for Riley White in the circle. There's Molly Jacobson taking over the third pitcher of the contest for Texas. Well, Jacobson, we thought she may get the start today. It was Courtney Day instead, followed by Riley White, but now we finally see Jacobson. Yeah, for Jacobson, it's going to be all about going after these hitters. She's gonna bring it from the left side. Last time we saw her, it was, she was having a problem leaving that ball up in the zone. So when she stays within herself, she able to throw that curve to both sides of the plate. The key is gonna be keeping it down at the knees. Molly Jacobson leading the team in wins. As we mentioned, Oklahoma State trying to extend their lead to three games over Texas in the Big 12 standings. The Cowgirls have won a program record 12 straight conference games. As for Texas, nine and four currently in Big 12 play. In third place, Molly Jacobson comes into this one leading the team in wins, but has struggled since Big 12 play began. Over five conference games in 10 innings of work has allowed 16 earned runs, including four homers. That's more than she allowed in 14 non-conference games. Yeah, I know when we talked with Coach White, he just really wanted to get after it in the bullpen. 
But again, for, from what I've seen, it's that curveball that she's just leaving up in the zone a little bit too much. So she's not going to overpower hitters with speed. Her bread and butter is spin, making that ball move. This one lifted to right. Right at Ellsworth, two away. The five, six, and seven hitters will be coming up for Texas in the bottom of the seventh, Parker, Sullivan, and Ellsworth. So right now, just trying to keep it a four-run game. Chelsea Alexander, strong at the plate today, strong all season long, two for three in this one, including a two-run double in the fourth inning. And has bumped her team leading average up to 432 this year. The eight and nine hitters in the Oklahoma State lineup combined for four hits, including two of the extra base variety. Four of the team's seven hits coming from eight and nine. Yeah, how clutch of that to have your nine hitter come up big time with runners on, get that the two RBIs, especially right after Texas ties it. Right, that was back in the fourth. Texas just hit that home run to go 1-1. One, one. Oklahoma State's pitching and defense has done the rest. Here's the 2-1 from Jacobson. Chop back to the veteran. And Sullivan unable to step on the bag. And the runner delayed call, if there was one at all over at third. Alexander is safe. Yeah, because of where Sullivan's playing, Oof. she goes right over the bag. Again, Texas, you just can't be making these mistakes. And unfortunately for Jacobson, I thought she did a nice job kind of leading her to the bag. She was running with her. Third error of the game, so runners on the corners for Kylie Naomi. Alexander on it first, David, pinch runner over at third. Oklahoma State led off the inning with a home run courtesy of Sidney Pennington. That one swiped foul. The count moves to one and two. Molly Jacobson had won six in a row entering the series with Oklahoma. And at least ends the inning with a strikeout. So here we go, bottom of the seventh on the way. Parker, Sullivan, and Ellsworth trying to help the Horns rally. Kelly Maxwell has thrown a one-hitter as we begin the bottom of the seventh inning. Gave up a home run to Ellsworth in the third, and that is it. As she gets ready to face Mackenzie Parker, who walked in the fifth inning. Maxwell working on her seventh complete game. As Parker lifts one to right. And the Horns down to their last two outs. Steady downpour here, at least the rain has picked up over the last inning or so. As Texas, they are one and three on the year when trailing, entering the seventh inning. Oklahoma State has never lost when leading in the seventh. Here is Sullivan, 0 for 1 with a walk. Don't forget the series wraps up tomorrow. At noon, no rain in the forecast, Megan. Not for Sunday, on wood. <laughs> for once. I know we need the rain, but man, it'd sure be nice if it just stayed maybe on Monday and Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> Should be good. Knock on wood for tomorrow. Kelly Maxwell, seven strikeouts 
Averages roughly nine per game. One of the best strikeout pitchers in the country. Three walks, one hit allowed. One and two to Sullivan. I just like Maxwell's composure. Same with Eberly, both of them. Steady Eddie. I don't feel like they get too high. They don't get too low. They don't look like they get rattled much either. Just right back to work. Even even after Maxwell walked the first two batters back in the fifth inning, right? You didn't see a whole lot of emotion out of her, and she gets right back in there. Able to get two quick outs from Ellsworth and Whitaker. And then the strikeout. Be a tough Oklahoma State team to beat in the postseason. Number five in the nation in ERA. Number 17 in batting average. And they were tied for 29th in fielding percentage entering the series. And they've had Texas's number as of late. They are mm -hmm. trying to make it 10 wins in their last 12 meetings against the Longhorns. I feel like Oklahoma State just getting better and better. Coach Gajewski coming in, I think, made a huge change, a huge difference. Sparked some fresh energy for this squad, and they have just looked so strong. Texas not finished quite yet. Sullivan earns the walk, her second of the game. After this series, Texas has Baylor coming up, and that's it for Oklahoma State after tomorrow. As you mentioned, Megan, the big matchup with the Sooners, and then the postseason begins. Texas, meanwhile, sending in a pinch runner. Camille Corona takes over here at first for Sullivan with Taylor Ellsworth coming up to bat. This is who Texas wants. She has provided the only hit of the game for the Longhorns, her first hit since the Iowa State Series three weeks ago, a solo home run in the third. You know, Maxwell, although she has pitched a gem of one hitter, there have been spurts where she struggled a bit with control, walked the first two batters in the fifth inning. Walked another batter in the sixth. Walked one here moments ago in the seventh. I have to think maybe the sixth and seventh, the rain having a little bit to do with it. When you think about, we were just talking about what's left for Oklahoma State. They go to play Oklahoma, and then a week later, you have the Big 12 tournament where more than likely they're going to have to face Oklahoma once again. But for all three of these teams that are in the top 15 right now. Ellsworth strokes one to left off the wall. And then holds up at first. Texas with runners on the corners and only one out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. How about that for Taylor? Ellsworth comes up again. And this is a well hit ball right off the wall to come in, especially, you know, not playing and getting a start against Kansas. Is side the starter today and making a big impact. So two aboard for Texas, down four here in the seventh. Mike White will see if he sends up a pinch hitter. It looks like he's going to for Jordan Whitaker, who went 0 for 2 with the strikeout. Well, initially, Tedder, MK Tedder, ran over to third. Camille Corona's there. Mike White called her back to the dugout. Yep. You got J.J. Smith putting on the elbow pads there. She started yesterday, but not today. Not and Smith will come up as a pinch hitter for, yeah. J for uh, Jordan Whitaker. I think this is the right move for sure. I think both of us a little surprised that we didn't see her in the lineup today. She had a hit yesterday. <laughs> Love the A-B song. <laughs> Bad to the bone. And she has been in her first year on the 40 acres, a 429 hitter, six doubles. Crucial, crucial spot for J.J. Smith. And here we go. Another first pitch ball from Maxwell. Smith had started the previous five games. 
driving in three runs, hitting 400 during that stretch. Right on it, great pitch to swing at. She gets that same backdoor curve just up in the zone a little bit more, just misses. Texas so far today, 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. They were 0 for yesterday with runners in scoring position. And it's one and two. Texas with 13 come from behind victories this year. This would tie for their largest comeback, the largest deficit they have faced when winning. They trailed by four against South Dakota, came back to win earlier this year. Rhodes and Iacopo, two of the nation's best home run hitters, look on. Corona on third, Ellsworth on first. The one two to the freshman, got her. Well, tough for JJ Smith to come out of the dugout and face one of the best strikeout pitchers in the country. Yeah, I feel like JJ Smith started off the AB good. She was on time and then, oh, by the way, Kelly Maxwell has the off speed that she hadn't seen yet. And that pitch is just so, not only just deceptive, uh, so you're not seeing it out of the hand, it still spins like an actual curveball. So then you're anticipating the ball to come hard and it just doesn't. She's able to take about eight miles per hour off of it and it's dirty. Well, this one has now come full circle. It will be up to Courtney Day to keep this game alive for Texas. She started the game in the circle, somewhat of a surprise start. It was just the seventh start of her career was replaced by Riley White and here she is with her first plate appearance of the day with two outs and two on in the seventh. A 333 hitter this year with 10 runs driven in. Chases that one. And Texas down to their last strike. What a job by Kelly Maxwell, eight strikeouts. Just two hits allowed, a single and a home run. Got her, that's the ball game. What a gem from the sophomore Maxwell as she improves to 14 and two on the season and Oklahoma State has now won a program record 13 consecutive Big 12 games. Kelly Maxwell, nine strikeouts on the get on the day. She gets them with the backdoor curve. We saw the off speed. She was working that rise ball up, just in command of that zone all game long. Oklahoma State extends their lead in the Big 12 standings to four games over Texas. Longhorns potent offense. Seventh highest scoring team in the nation held to one run for the second consecutive game, Megan. Yeah, this Texas team is going to have to go back to the drawing board, take a look at some film and figure out a way to get to this pitching staff. We'll see you again for the finale tomorrow at noon here from McCombs Field. In this one, Oklahoma State gets five runs off seven hits, no errors for Texas. One run, two hits, and three errors. For Megan Willis, I'm Alex Loeb. Again, we'll see you for the series finale tomorrow at 12 between number 12 Texas and ninth ranked Oklahoma State. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.